What's up everybody? So this is going to be a quick little video showing off uh, the nuances of downloading any of the Autodesk products using the educational access. Um, it's really not all that much. And if you don't want to uh, see all the nuances, you're just figuring out what to do. You go to this URL, you're just going to go make an account and fill it out, fill out the form you have, which I do suggest watching uh, me go through the form, talking about it, and then choose your product, download it, install it, log in, and you should be good. But I'm going to show you um, a little bit of information I think is worth knowing. You know, so we've got the eligibility terms. If you're not sure if you qualify as a student, some things do qualify like you wouldn't expect, like homeschooling, thesis, apprenticeship. There's even a list of what you can't qualify with. <clears throat> and so if you're not sure, go take a look over there. If you're more of a step-by-step -step person, you can go and look at any of these three links here to see how to go get your software set up uh, with a little step-by-step -step here. You know, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, create an account, confirm you're eligible, download it, open the product, go to work, you know, pretty straightforward. But um, for those that like a little more, you know, step-by-step -step stuff, I'm going to show you what I can show you. I already have an account as an educator. And so I'm not signed in here and the prompts do look fairly different, not really enough to matter. Uh, so I'm just going to, you know, click on this as if I don't have an account because likely you don't and we'll talk about it. So when you click on that, it's going to give you three prompts here, three options. Um, you know, if you're a teacher, you have more control. You can choose any of the three from time to time. If you're a student, you've got the one, uh, you know, students, there's videos for that on my page. If you want to watch just a student focused one, you can, there's, uh, inventor videos, AutoCAD, Revit. It's all the same process, just a different, you know, program featured. So, um, the, the way it works is you have seats. Each user will have a seat, uh, allocated to it. You know, for the educators here, you can see there's a, option to get 250 seats or 3000, but any given seat that you have is going to have access to be able to be installed on several devices. You can just only use one user license at a time. I believe it might be two actually, um, because I've definitely had it open on my desktop and laptop before, but the general rule is I think it's maybe two devices. You can have it installed on up to three, I do believe. And, uh, you know, so you can, you don't have to just put it on one computer and be content. Now, um, I'm kind of catering this one more towards educators since I've got a bunch on students. So educators, you know, if I were to go and work in a lab and then get these installed, I would use the IT option. The reason being is one, you get that three year option, which is cool. You know, we update our software annually, but in case you don't, this is a nice feature to not have to uh, renew it. And then the main driving force is that if you do a regular educator option, you have to invite these students with emails and manage this and you can import it with a CSV, I believe, but it's, um, it's a lot more time consumption than just having a simple install on a computer that your IT can handle. Um, so for, if a lab situation is what you're looking for, you probably want this. If you're really into the option for educator, go for it. But keep in mind that once you choose one, it kind of commits you to it. I, uh, I chose the wrong one initially with educator and I've not been able to go back to IT administrator on some of my programs because of that. So if you are a teacher, consider IT as your option. Uh, IT can also do the same thing if they'd rather do it. And then if you're a teacher who is looking just to do it on your personal computer or maybe your workstation, but you don't need it in the lab, go with student. I use student for my stuff and, you know, it works just fine. Uh, there's no difference between what you get access to. It's just, um, you know, how many licenses are you looking for? And so, you know, in this case, if I were going to be either a student or a teacher, I would choose in this case for my personal computer, student. So I'm going to click on Fusion, you know, uh, the agree to it, get to it, fill out the form. It's straightforward. You're going to put your educational email in here. And so for me, I work at GNTC. I would put my GNTC email. And the reason you want to use your uh, school email is because it's easier for ver verification. And if you are a teacher or a student, uh, there is a bit of an issue if you don't use your email sometimes, especially for teachers. Uh, a while back, I had to go through and delete my account after years and wait about 45 days for it to actually process in order to get access to the IT option. Uh, apparently, you know, if you don't have your school credentialed email, that can cause some issues for it. So for teachers especially, make sure you're using your actual credentialed email. And then I can't show you three and four because I do have an account, but it's pretty straightforward. It's going to ask you for your institution. It'll have you look it up. You need to make sure if you're a high school student in college or you are a college student or a college teacher, 
there's not an option for technical college. And I work at a technical college. So if you're at a college of any kind, make sure you choose the option that is called university slash post-secondary. You choose that and you're good. If you don't, um, unfortunately, you have to delete your account <laughs> and uh, go through the same process I talked about, wait a little bit, and then make your account again using the correct option. So it's very important that you choose university slash post-secondary. Now, say you do end up in a situation where, you know, you've, you've chosen a wrong option that I can't really show here, but I'm talking about, um, you know, you chose whatever high school by mistake, you can contact customer service and they can sometimes expedite the process to get, um, your account wiped, but keep in mind that they have a chat based, uh, customer service for people who use the educational products. They don't support it as much because it's free products. So if you're having problems getting through, there's no shame in just going to the paid section, the support for it, and go in there. Because what you'll find is that you can get a hold of somebody on the phone and tell them the real story and they'll be able to help you anyways. It's a little unethical, but if you can't get help, you can always use the paid services. I mean, they're not you're not charged for it, but you know, if you pay for AutoCAD or Inventor, they have better support available. That's all. Okay. And so after that, you know, they're gonna ask you about verification, right? You know, like how do we know you qualify? And so usually they'll give you like a little picture and say like, oh, you need to provide this, this, and this. And you just need to make sure that you give them documentation in that attachment area that covers all of it. So for students, I usually tell them, you know, a copy of um, Wii's Blackboard. So like a copy of their Blackboard class, you know, like a picture of it where it shows the GNTC logo, it shows their name and it shows their class. And then also, a copy of their student detail schedule. So you can see it listed officially, again, probably showing the logo with their name, with the classes. So it's pretty easy for a computer to scan it and confirm it. Same thing for a teacher, just the only difference would be share your faculty detail schedule. You know, um, once you do that, it should take anywhere from five minutes to about 24 hours. You'll be approved and you'll have your account set up and you can just hit download. You know, it'd be pretty straightforward. But for me, you know, I've already made it, so I don't have to fill this out. I'm just going to log into my account and kind of show you what you would do after that point. <clears throat> okay, so, you know, for me, it should go back to this option. As you see, I've only got two options here. I'm missing my IT1 for Fusion, sadly. So I'll hit Access for Students. And for whatever reason, it brought me back to this page. That's okay. So I'm going to hit Fusion. Choose to download it. For you, it should say Access. I've already downloaded Fusion in the past, but you'll uh, open up the downloader that it gives you. <clears throat> okay. And so this will probably take some time. So I'll flash forward, but I'm going to talk a little bit about things that you have to look out for while it's downloading. So it's a relatively small program, but the way that licensing is handled with all Autodesk products is right now, if you've never installed an Autodesk product before, it's installing this program, Fusion, as well as a program called Autodesk Access. You can search it, you know, in your search bar. Uh, it's also always in a little app drawer, and it looks like this. So if I open this up, this is actually a pretty cool tool. It allows you to update your programs directly in one spot, so you can keep it up to date. Uh, maybe get security patches or just new features, you know, anything that they add. So you'll, you're you're going to want to periodically go through here and just apply updates. But also, if you're having problems when you go to Fusion and you try to log in and it's not working, you log into it and uh, for whatever reason it says error, you know, something's not right. That means you're probably logged out here. So make sure to check and confirm that you're seeing, you know, your initials here and that you're logged into the access thing. This handles all the licensing. And so if it's not logged in, it's not going to work elsewhere. But assuming it is, you know, once we get booted up in here, it should be as simple as making sure you're logged in. It should actually automatically log you in because it's there, but sometimes it doesn't. Or sometimes it just needs you to re-put in its credentials like any app on your phone, you know, where periodically it just decides to log you out. But regardless, you're going to need to stay logged in to your Autodesk product in order for it to maintain your network license properly. And so um, I'll show you a little more what that looks like. But for now, I'm just going to stop talking and fast forward this once we get to it and we'll uh, reconvene. OK, so ironically, the pop up for Fusion is loading on my other screen, but 
Um, right now it's got a, a lovely screen that's just showing that it's loading up the additional modules and now we are loading. It's actually saying that it's signing in and I'm trying to drag it back over. So down here it was saying it was sign in and we should be up. Okay, so we're loading. Now, if you've never used Fusion before, it's probably gonna prompt you for like a, um, a project database. You know, uh, I think they call it a, a hub, I believe. Yeah, uh, you know, so I, I use Fusion. I have um, for about a year total, I guess you could say experience with it. I worked with it um, in the industrial field, but you know, so I haven't used it in a little minute, but um, needless to say, I think they call it a hub and you'll just save it. It's essentially gonna be a repository for you to save your stuff to. Um, once you name that, you should be prompted with a new view, you know, like this, just showing the model area. Um, all you're looking for is to have the, um, the, the, your initials listed here. As long as you see your initials here, you're logged in, you're good to go. You can go ahead and use Fusion as you intend to. If you don't, make sure you're logged in here, make sure you're logged in into Autodesk Access, and you should be off to the races. It's as easy as that. Not very difficult. Now, um, keep in mind that, you know, in order to get to the software, you could have went to the URL I showed at the beginning, you know, when I was talking about it, but I am going to include that in the link, uh, in the description. So you can just go to it. You can also, if for whatever reason, say the link is quit working, you can generically just Google Autodesk education, free software for students. You see, I've Googled it a million times. As long as you Google that phrase, something along that lines, you'll find the website you're looking for, just like you see here. Uh, keep in mind that you should see education in the URL. If you don't see education in the URL, there's a fair chance that you have made it to their main page. And if you do, it's gonna to try to ask you for money and offer you a trial if you don't pay. That's not even a part of education. You know, the educational package is entirely free. You just gotta verify. So if for whatever reason you've landed on the wrong page, just make sure to, uh, you know, get back to the right page by either clicking that link in the description or uh, searching it manually right there. So if anybody has any questions, you know, just feel free to chime in in the comments and otherwise I'll catch you guys in the next video.